I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on advanced functions. In this video, we will discuss about thinking and communication questions based on rate of change. We have three questions. First one is, height in meters of a ball t seconds after it is hit is given by the function h of t equals to minus 5t square plus 20t plus 1. Find the time when the ball reaches the maximum height using the concept of rate of change. Question 2. Determine the value of a and b so that the function f of x equals to x square plus ax plus b has a minimum at minus 4 minus 11. And the third question has two parts here. It says the given point is either a maximum or a minimum on the function. Verify using rate of change and explain your solution. So they are similar points minus 1 2 on the function x cube minus 3x and the second one has a point b which is minus 2 8 on f of x equals to 2x cube plus 6x square. You can always pause the video answer the question and then look into my suggestions. Let's try to understand the concept for all the three questions here. So in the very first one, we have a ball which follows a parabolic trajectory, uh, kind of like this. And what we really need to figure out is the point where highest point is reached. So obviously there, the, there will be rate of change will be zero, right? So slope m equals to zero. So we need to find this value of t, correct? So that is the value t uh, for maximum height, which we are interested in finding, right? In the second question, we are saying that we have a parabola x squared plus ax plus b, which has a minimum at minus 4, minus 11. So, so this time we have a parabola. The parabola is given to us, right? It opens upwards since the leading coefficient is positive. And we know that the minimum here is at minus 4, minus 11. But we need to find the value of A and B, correct? Part C, and we have to use the concept of rate of change, not completing the squares. Part C is, the given point is either a maximum or a minimum on the function. Verify using rate of change and explain your solution. Now in this particular case, let's try to understand the situation. It's a cubic equation, right? Clearly we have two zeros here. Uh, if you consider the first one, right, you could factor x and you get x cube, uh, sorry, x square minus uh, 3. And that means there are three zeros. So you do have a parabola, which is kind of like this. Sorry, you do have a cubic equation, which is kind of like this. Now let us say if the point we're talking about is here. In that case, you will notice that at the maximum, the slope is positive before it and is negative after, right? So that is how the rate of change will change and at this point it will be zero correct, for a maximum. So what you notice here is that the maximum is when the slope changes from positive to negative, right? However, if we have negative to positive, in that case we expect a minimum. So from rate of change we can figure out whether we have a maximum minimum or neither because the slope m has to be zero right slope m should be zero in both the cases so that is the concept now using this concept let's try to answer these questions one by one here is a thinking and communication question where we are going to use the difference quotient formula to solve the question here is height in meters of a ball t seconds after it is hit is given by the function h of t equals to minus 5t square plus 20t plus 1. 
find the time when the ball reaches the maximum height using the concept of rate of change right so here the point is not given to us we have to find it and therefore we are going to use difference quotient method now remember at the maximum instantaneous rate of change is going to be zero so we'll find instantaneous rate of change and using this difference quotient method the formula will be in this case function is height so we we'll write h of t plus uh, some value so let's say t plus h minus h of t over h that is what we are going to find where h is very very small as compared to 1 clear so when I say t plus h that means a point which is uh, very close to t right now we can substitute t plus h here so we get minus 5 t plus h whole square plus 20 times t plus h plus 1 minus all this right which is h of t right so which is minus 5 t square plus 20 t plus 1 it's important to write the brackets so you know absolutely clear thereafter let's expand and simplify so we get instantaneous rate of change that should be equal to 0 at the turning point right equals to 0 at turning point which is the maximum for us clear let us expand this so we get minus 5 t plus h whole square gives us t square plus 2th plus h square right here we have plus open the bracket 20t plus 20h plus 1 minus here we have minus 5t square plus 20t plus 1 everything divided by h so whenever you do difference quotient you will notice that all these terms three of them will cancel if they don't cancel that means something wrong has occurred do you understand minus 5t square minus 5t square taken away correct now we can now write this as 0 equals to open the bracket so we have minus 10 th plus rather minus 5h square we have plus 20h right and all these cancel divided by h so here h is common now so we can take h common there are other terms also which are common anyway we'll keep them so minus 10t minus 5 um, h and then here we have plus 20 over h so the idea is to cancel h we also know that h is very very small as compared to 1 it is approaching 0 so in that case this also approaches 0 do you see that so what we get here is that 0 is equals to minus 10 t plus 20 okay so bringing 10 t on this side we get 10 t equals to 20 or t equals to 20 over 10 which is 2 right so we get our answer that after two seconds the ball will be at the maximum height Sometimes you may be you know, required to find the height also. You can substitute 2 here and get your answer, right? So h of t will give you the maximum height. But I hope overall the method explains how do you, you find the point on the curve where there could be a turning point. And this turning point could be a maximum or a minimum, right? So in this case, since parabola leading coefficient is negative, 
we know it's a curve which is kind of like this and so we are heading for a maximum perfect so i hope that helps determine the value of a and b so that the function f of x equals to x square plus ax plus b has a minimum at minus 4 minus 11. you can actually uh, solve this question using two different methods you could use difference quotient method in this case you are actually given that minimum is at minus 4 so you can also use this point minus 4 uh, to solve the question right so it could be done either way perfect so um, my recommendation here is that uh, what you should do is you should do difference quotient method uh, and then we'll substitute minus 4 and find the answer correct okay so we'll find instantaneous rate of change at any general point so basically f of x plus h minus f of x over h right that is what we'll find so where h is a very small number right so substituting we get x plus h whole square plus a times x plus h plus b minus f of x will be the same function which is x square plus ax plus b over h and remember h is very very small as compared to 1 we sometimes say it approaches 0 so sometimes we also say uh, h approaches 0 either way it means one and the same thing so let's expand this we get x square plus 2 xh plus h square and here we have plus ax plus ah plus b minus all this which is minus x square minus ax minus b everything divided by h so you'll always notice that these three terms will cancel if they don't that means something wrong has already occurred now since we know that h is very very small as compared to this we know h square approaches zero so we'll consider this to be also zero right so what we can do here is that we can always write this as approximate value of 2xh we are approaching this to zero so we are left with only a h here uh, the other terms cancel away right divided by h now here h is common so we get 2x plus a over h now h and h cancel so we get approximately equals to 2x plus a now since we are looking for a minimum we are looking for a minimum right so so for minimum this should be zero is it okay so for minimum this should be equal to zero now we are saying that minimum occurs at minus 4 minus 11 so I'll substitute x as minus 4 right and 0 for instantaneous rate of change correct so when I do that I get 0 equals to 2 times minus 4 plus a so from here I can find the value of a right so we get 0 equals to minus 8 plus a or 8 is the value of a so we get one of the values which is a which is equal to 8 perfect now a is given to us which is 8 now we know that the minimum occurs at minus 4 minus 11 and we know the value of a is 8 so we are going to use the point minus 4 minus 11 and a equals to 8 in the function equation itself so what we get here is that uh, substituting minus 4 for x and minus 11 for this we get minus 11 equals to minus 4 square plus 8 is the value of a times minus 4 plus b correct so we can rearrange and get the value of b 
So here minus 11 equals to, let's write 16 minus 32 plus b. And bringing this minus 16 to this side, it becomes minus 11 plus 16 equals to b, which is equal to 5, right? So the value of b is 5. Clear? So that is how we can find the value of A and B. And so we get our answer that the value of A is equal to 8 and the value of B is equal to 5. Is that clear to you? So that is the method of solving such questions. The question here is, the given point is either a maximum or a minimum on the function. Verify using rate of change and explain your solution. So we have two examples here. Point minus 1, 2 on the function x cubed minus 3x. The other one is point minus 2, 8 on f of x equals to 2x cubed plus 6x squared. So the first function, you could actually factor x and write this as x squared minus 3, right? So we get three roots here at 0 and plus minus square root 3. So you notice that this particular function uh, will have a graph which will be kind of like this, correct? So I'm trying to explain you the concept first and then we'll get into the solution, right? Uh, so 1, 0 is, uh, is at x equals to 0, right? The other two are at uh, square root of minus 3, square root 3 minus value, and square root of 3 plus, right? So these are your three zeros. We are given a point minus 1. We do expect a uh, local maximum at this point. And the reason being that if you look at the tangent before and after, it changes from increasing to decreasing from the graph, right? So, so that is the whole idea. So we are going to analyze the preceding and following rate of change, right? To justify whether it is a maximum or a minimum, right? Local maximum or a minimum. Is it clear to you? Okay. So what we will do here is since we are interested in minus 1, let's calculate the value of the function at minus 1. So if I substitute here, minus 1 cube, minus 3 times minus 1, I get minus 1 plus 3, which is equal to 2. Right? Now a point on the, let's say this is minus 1. So point on the left side will be minus 1.1, correct? So we get minus 1.1 whole cube. Uh, 3 times minus 1.1 equals 2. And then on the right side of this, we'll use a point which is f of minus 0 0.9, correct? So minus 0 0.9 whole cube minus 3 times minus 0 0.9. So let's use the calculator to find these values. So within brackets, we have minus 1.1 whole cube minus 3 times within brackets minus 1.1. Uh, this value is uh, in decimals. Let's write down 1.969. Positive, right? Now I'm going to change this value to minus 0 0.9, okay? So if I change this to minus 0 0.9, then what do we get? 0 0.9 equals to. So we get a decimal value which is equal to uh, 1.971. Okay, so, so we do get these two values. Now we'll find rate of change from left and right, right? So, so the instantaneous rate of change from left that is to say, uh, we are considering now this point on the 
left side right so so we'll say f of minus 1.1 minus f of 1 over minus 1.1 minus 1 right so we'll calculate this value now so which is equal to uh, we already calculated this as 1.969 minus f of 1 which is 2 divided by so here we get uh, so minus of minus 1 I'm sorry so you, you add 1 so you get minus 0 0.1 correct so let's calculate this value we have 1.969 minus 2 which is equal to and we are going to divide this by minus 0.1 so that gives you in decimals 0 0.31 right so that gives you 0 0.31 so that is the positive slope right so it is positive so it confirms that on the left side it is increasing right so that means uh, the tangent is increasing it's kind of like this clear now let us also find the instantaneous rate of change from the right side so let me write like this instantaneous rate of change from the right so, so we have considered this point which is um, f of minus 1 minus f of uh, 0 0.9 minus over minus 1 minus minus 0 0.9 correct so that is from the right side so we are considering this and we have calculated the value as 2 minus this value is at 1.971 divided by so this is uh, negative uh, 0 0.1 correct so that should give you let's use the calculator once again so we get 2 minus 1.971 and divide this by uh, within brackets minus 0.1 decimal value is uh, minus 0 0.29 right so approximately 0 0.3 correct so we get that value negative clearly indicates that it is decreasing right correct so what we see here is that the instantaneous rate of change at x equals to minus 1 is the average of these two, right? Is the, well, this is negative, is the average, is, is equal to average, right? Average value. So which is 0 0.31 minus 0 0.29 over 2. So we have uh, 0.31 minus 0.29 equals to divide by 2 equals to in decimals. It gives us 0 0.01, which is almost 0. Is it clear to you? So the average value is 0. The instantaneous rate of change at x equals to 0 is, is 0. That means horizontal tangent line. So clearly, it indicates what? It indicates a maximum. Since the instantaneous rate of change changes from positive to negative. Clear? So if it is like this, we get a maximum. Is that clear to you? So that is how we are going to explain this particular question. And these are the steps involved. So I hope all the steps are perfectly fine. Now based on this, I'd like you to pause the video. Answer, we already done A. I'd like you to do the same example. There's hardly any difference here. The calculation should be made as per the values given. The point is also at negative 2. So almost same calculations. So I'd like you to perform these calculations and verify that there indeed is a local maximum at this point right so which is minus 2 8 perfect so here we can end the video part b is for you to practice the question here is 
The given point is either a maximum or a minimum on the function. Verify using rate of change and explain your solution. So this is part B, where the point is B minus 2, 8 on the function f of x equals 2, 2x cubed plus 6x squared. So in this case, we will check the rate of change around the point minus 2. So let's find the value of the function at minus 2 first. So that gives you 2 times minus 2 cube plus 6 times minus 2 square. We need to find rate of change preceding and following rate of change. So let's take the value. On the left side of this, a point will be minus 2.1, right? So for that, the value will be 2 times minus 2.1 whole cube plus 6 times minus 2.1 whole square. We'll use calculator to figure out these values. And on the right side, it will be minus 1.9. So at that point, the value will be, we'll substitute minus 1.9 in the function to get this value, correct? Now let's use the calculator to find all the values. So first is 2 within brackets we have minus 2 whole cube plus 6 times minus 2 within brackets, right, square. So the first value here is 8. Now we'll change uh, 2 to minus 2.1. And then again calculate the value here is in decimals is equal to 7.938 the next value here will be at checked at minus 1.9 And this is equal to, in decimals, uh, 7.942. So, so basically from the values also, you get an idea that on the left side, it is lesser than 8, right? So it is kind of like this. So what we found is that at minus 2, the value is 8. At minus 2.1, this is when x equals to minus 2. Then let us say this is a 2.1. So at this point, we have a minus 2.1. The value is 7.9, let's say 4. And on that side, we have at minus 1.9 you can see the value which is 7.94 correct so looking at this diagram itself and from the points themselves you do see that if i join or if i draw a line here we get a positive slope here on this side we get a negative slope in between seems to be zero correct so that becomes a maximum do you understand the concept correct but we'll actually find the preceding and following rate of change, right? So let's calculate preceding average rate of change, right? So in that case, we are going to uh, use the value f of, so this is minus 2.1, right? Minus 2.1 minus f of 2 over minus minus 2 minus 2.1 minus minus 2 correct so minus 2.1 the value was 7.938 take away the value 8 and in the denominator we get uh, minus 0 0.1 right that becomes plus minus let's calculate this 
So, so we have 7.938 minus 8 and then we'll divide this by, uh, sorry, let's say equal to first, right? I didn't put bracket, so I'll divide by negative 0.1. So that gives you approximately 0 0.62. It's positive, correct? Now let's find the following. average rate of change right so in that case we are going to use these two values which is f of minus 1.9 minus f of minus 2 over minus 1.9 minus minus 2 correct so these values are 7.942 minus 8 over so when you do this that is 2 minus this which is plus 0 0.1 correct so we get 7.942 minus 8 equals 2 divided by 0.1 equals 2. So in decimals, this value is minus 0 0.58. Correct. So slope on this side, rate of change is minus. Right? So basically at the at 2 so what is the instantaneous rate of change when x is equals to minus 2 it is average of these two right so we'll just add them up 0 0.62 plus minus 0 0.58 divided by 2 right so which you get so 0 0.62 0 0.62 minus 0.58 and then we're dividing this by 2 so the decimal value is 0 0.02 which is approximately equal to 0 correct that means it's a horizontal tangent at this place correct now you can clearly see that in this case we have a positive slope right so so it is a positive slope on the preceding side negative slope on this side so at 2 we have a maximum right so we have maximum at minus 2 right so at x equals to minus 2 since slope of tangent slope changes from positive to negative is that clear to you right so that is how we can confirm using rate of change. So the concept is rate of change. That at the given point, we have a maximum. At the given point, the instantaneous rate of change is zero. That means a horizontal tangent line. So it has to be a maximum or a minimum, right? So we have a local maximum. I should write this as local maximum for sure. Is that okay? So that is how we are going to do it. So I hope with this, you understand how to solve questions based on rate of change. We took actually very good examples and uh, they will really help you to understand all the concepts. So these were the uh, three examples. The last question we just did was this one. I would like you to practice once again, solve such questions so that you are absolutely ready for your unit two test. Thanks for your time and all the best.